Hello everyone, it's Maive, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be more of a chat while you watch over my shoulder while I craft. This is in no way a tutorial since I'm trying to sculpt with air dry clay for the first time and I don't feel qualified to advise anyone on it. The clay I'm using is Fimo Air Basic and there's no other reason for using this clay than just the sheer curiosity to see how it behaves and how it's different from polymer clay and of course what I'm able to do with it. I did like using this clay, it felt really nice on my hands. It can be a mess compared to polymer clay but I actually found it very liberating because with polymer clay I'm always paying too much attention to keeping the clay and my tools clean. I wash my hands a lot and I wipe my surfaces countless times so it's nice not to have to worry about that for a change. I'm used to taking my time and enjoying the process when I work with polymer clay so using air dry clay definitely made me speed up or not worry about details. Also because my pack of clay was already opened and had been sitting in an airtight box for a couple of years actually, it was still pliable but I had to knead it with a bit of water before adding the clay to the tinfoil structure so it was easier to work with and to blend it to the clay that was already there. The toadstool and caterpillar design has been on my mind for a long time. It's just one of those things that I dream about and that I keep on my list for so long that I either don't find the time or the right moment to really sit down and do it or perhaps as I let the thought loose slightly and the initial excitement you know die down a bit other things push their way to the front and suddenly became priorities so I decided that the day had come to bring this idea to life and to get that block of air dry clay out and to do something with it. I would like to make a polymer clay version of this culture and see how different they would be and to see if I'm right in thinking that the polymer clay version would be a lot more detailed than this one. I imagine the polymer clay one not only to be more detailed but to tell more of a story. I feel like this one doesn't tell much of a story, it's just a caterpillar sitting on a toadstool, that's it. It doesn't really tell anything in my opinion. I think that's because the polymer clay version would have a lot more of my personality in it. Uh, the caterpillar would have a face and it would be sitting up instead of crawling. The mushroom would have different colours and it would look more magical. Uh, I did imagine that once it was finished, it was going to feel as if we, the spectators, were Alice and we were talking to the caterpillar. I did think about sculpting Alice next to the mushroom, but then I thought, no, I would like everyone that sees this sculpture or that interacts with this sculpture, whether it is personally because they bought it or through a video or a photograph, to feel as if they you know, or we are the Alice character and we are interacting with the caterpillar. Whoever the caterpillar is in your mind, you know, whoever you want the caterpillar to be, you can choose. And if the caterpillar were this really wise being and you could ask him anything, what would you want to know from the caterpillar? If he could answer one question, just one, what would you want to know the most? What would it be if you could have one of those questions answered? What would it be? I don't know. I think I would ask something like, what's my purpose in life? <laughs> or I don't know, am I going in the right direction? Or I don't know of the point of it all. <laughs> Too existential. <laughs> Oh, 
Okay, so you saw that little accident. Well, it wasn't really an accident. I noticed that the area underneath the caterpillar was cracking. So as I went to inspect, I snapped the caterpillar off or it came off really easily. So can you really blame me? <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, I patched up the crack with wet clay and tried to smooth the whole thing down. Then I placed the caterpillar on top uh, using clay on the belly and trying to blend the clay both to the body and the mushroom underneath. I let it dry for a bit and then added all the feet. I may have added more of those bumps on the mushroom and then I just let it dry for about two days because I wanted to make sure it was completely dry before I painted it because I didn't want the caterpillar to go wandering off again. And I'm just using acrylic paints, nothing fancy, just water-based paints. I only watered down some brown paint to colour the underside of the mushroom. Everywhere else is just paint because I didn't want to add extra moisture unnecessarily. I gave the mushroom a gradient effect. I applied a light terracotta or orangey shade to the edge and gradually added more red the closer I got to the top where I used dark red. I found that because of the porous nature of this clay, the paint, whether it's uh, watered down or not, was streaky on the clay, but other than that, it was very straightforward to paint. I felt like I didn't have a lot of control over this type of clay. If it had been polymer clay, I could have baked the structure at different stages and painted at different stages as well, which would have allowed me to get a neater finish. Also, painting the caterpillar was very uncomfortable because I had to hold the mushroom at really awkward angles to get the brush on the belly of the caterpillar. What I liked about working with this type of clay is that you don't have to get up so many times to bake it, wait for it to bake and cool down and stuff like that. And the look of it is a lot more rustic because at least I didn't feel like I could go too small when sculpting details because the clay can be very fragile and I didn't want to end up knocking all these pieces off. So I went for really chunky decorations like the grass and the caterpillar. So it does look a bit more rustic and chunky and it's a nice look. Maybe not my preferred look, but it does the job if rustic is what you're going for. Still, I didn't take the making of this sculpture too seriously. I allowed myself a bit of freedom and margin for error, you know, to make lots of mistakes, to see the good and the bad. I did have my doubts about what colours to paint it. Initially, I wanted to paint it bronze, then I changed my mind and I almost painted it gold. Then I changed my mind again because I wanted something a bit more visual, so I went for the full colour combination. I hope you guys enjoyed this video even though it was a bit different from normal. If you did like it, please give this video a thumbs up so I know. And I'd love to know your thoughts on working with air dry clay if you do. If you just happen to stumble across my channel, hello, my name is Maeve and I try to post polymer clay tutorials every week. So go ahead and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss when I upload. You can always see what I'm up to on my other social media sites, especially Instagram where I am more active. I'm now going to leave you guys to watch the rest of the video. Thank you so much for watching and for making it this far and I'll catch you next time. Bye, ciao ciao.